I've alluded before in one or two videos that George A. Romero's Diary of the Dead is one of the most disappointing missed opportunities in fine footage history and ranks as perhaps the worst film in Romero's legendary career. I'm not going to spend too much time setting the scene for this one because it pains me to speak ill of Romero's work, but for what's on paper should have been a pretty simple zombie flick turned into a bafflingly contrived commentary on modern media consumption that lacks the engaging nuances to make any of it truly meaningful. After returning to the zombie scene with 2005's Land of the Dead following a 20-year hiatus since his last Living Dead film, it led to a subsequent new trilogy of sorts, with Diary and Survival having the most direct connection via two crossing narratives. If you want a broader discussion on the issue I'm going to highlight, like I said in my Crazies video, Red Letter Media made a number of interesting points when they cover Land of the Dead, a film which I will make an alternative case for in my next video, but for me, a Diary is undeniably the worst offender, even if I respect its intentions. I cannot stress it enough that this is going to be a rather complicated critique because there are some compelling issues faintly established that become lost in this brain meltingly convoluted execution that made me feel more like a zombie by the time it was finished. As always, I will do my best to highlight the positives and the possible intent of some of the uh, stranger elements, but please do leave your thoughts in the comments below, especially for anything I miss, consider liking the video and subscribing, and lastly, here is a quick word from this video sponsor, Raycon. With Raycon earbuds ability to suit any occasion, rarely do I have a reason to take these puppies out. If there's one thing I love about their noise isolation, it's that it allows me to block out my gym's awful playlist and focus on my own trashy music to give me motivation and self-confidence. With their modified gel tips specifically designed to fit the curvature of the human ear both big or small, Raycon earbuds make for a snug, comfortable fit that will not budge even if I awkwardly try, meaning I can get on with the things that matter without interference, and when I get home I can always use their Siri and Alexa compatibility to seamlessly switch to my shameful Netflix horror indulgence in order to relax. In fact, if you have Raycon's latest model, you can even switch to awareness mode so you can safely listen out for traffic, people, or the ensuing zombie apocalypse. Lastly, specifically over the last month, I've been doing a lot of conference calls, giving me the perfect reason to use Raycon's built-in microphone. Raycon's provide brilliant sound quality at half the price of other premium audio brands, with over 49,000 five-star reviews to vouch for such a bargain. Packed with a pocketable charge case to offer eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, go pick your favourite colour and join the Raycon army today by clicking the link in the description box below or going to buyraycon.com slash Ryan to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. So, the story of Diary of the Dead sees a group of film students essentially travel from one destination to another, documenting the chaos as it happens while encountering various groups and individuals along the way. It's a meandering plot that aims for a sort of cinema verite observational perspective that explores how humanity reacts to the sudden breakdown of society and the almost immediate escalation to violence and immorality, with a few touches of flickering hope scattered in between. For the most part, it's a surprisingly grim and cynical film that pushes these generic notions of, is humanity even worth saving, are we in fact the zombies obsessed with our phones and technology, as well as a couple of bits regarding racial inequality, capitalism and the abuse of power. Inherently, they are all urgent and harrowing ideas that deserve discussion, but because the film brushes quickly between everything without any time to properly digest particular circumstances, especially those with the most tangible relevancy, it undermines and dilutes their overall significance. There is genuinely striking and noble potential here, but the problem is that it's difficult to engage with the message when the overall journey lacks deeper focus on specific core issues. Thus, by trying to say too much with so little, it inadvertently feels more empty rather than sincere. 
Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know I love thematics as much as the next person, but what truly hurts this film's desire for thoughtfulness is how it constantly tries to audaciously project itself as thought-provoking with our main protagonist's condescending narration. If you have to tell someone you're smart or funny or talented instead of just showing it, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice. Anyone can talk the talk, but actually being able to apply it to something should speak for itself. However, this leads us to the confusing matter of the main protagonists, who are essentially played off as the exact type of pretentious people to make a shallow, somewhat narcissistic film like this. The film students are frankly obnoxious, and I mean that in the earnest way possible because I hate to admit that I relate to being like this when I was a snobby film student. They're initially presented as arrogant, self-absorbed, and ignorant, with their student director Jason slowly becoming this tainted moral leader who wants to show the world the truth that the mainstream media won't. But the more you think about it, and I appreciate that the film does somewhat address this, he's clearly doing it for his own pride and ego. I think this is the one and only truly fleshed out and original part of the film. At what point does your moral quest become more about you than those you are supposedly doing it for? No, wait, wait, go back. Step back. Okay, ready. Come in. There is a honesty to this question that becomes emblematic of the entire film, to the point that, dare I say, I was starting to suspect the film was a fucking satire. It's either lacking in total self-awareness, or the film is deliberately trying to be pretentiously vague to reflect the attitudes of people like Jason. Let me explain. Jason effectively becomes the moral antagonist of the story. He is driven by this one desire to insensitively film all these tragic, harrowing events and upload them onto MySpace so that the world can see the raw, undisturbed truth. But he seems more gratified by his success rather than by the intent for why he's doing it. But he's never presented as a likeable or compassionate guy. He's ambitious and determined, but it alienates people because he's so demanding and rude to get what he wants. Now, in a good mood, I would say it's entirely intentional. The film is a criticism on the moral and dubious intentions of the media. However, going back to what I said about the lack of deeper focus on specific themes, the ending sends a rather conflicting message on where Jason's morality really falls into this allegory. So for this point, I'm going to give away a major spoiler, but it is heavily implied in the opening narration, so I don't think it's that big a deal, but Jason does die in the end, when the group decide to wait out the apocalypse in a panic room, but he refuses and goes off to fill more stuff, only to get infected before being euthanized. The opening establishes that his girlfriend Deborah has edited the film as a means to honour Jason's goal to tell us the truth about what happened. Happened. Thus, we have this meta framing device where the film is technically a completed student project. As such, Jason is framed as a martyr, suggesting his goal was sincere, which is a complete 180 that contradicts why Deborah conflicts with him throughout the story. But then again, the film being contrived and pretentious is kind of what you would expect from these film students. Here's the thing, the film that Jason is actually making just as the outbreak occurs is some shitty lowbrow horror B-movie where he literally tries to get a boob shot to make his film more raunchy and provocative. Part of me wants to believe this is Romero injecting himself onto the character as someone who made a creature feature that was later perceived as iconic, let alone allegorical, giving the whole film a self-reflexive feel. Diary of the Dead is a B-movie through and through that mirrors exactly the low-rate film Jason was originally making. It's cheap, stilted, corny, and straight-up amateur in many ways, yet without the charm considering it takes itself way too seriously. If we're going down the route of questioning the intention of its style, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much a low-rate student film, with all its melodramatic interludes to reflect on society, as well as its own self-admitted cliched attempts to scare you. 
I've added music occasionally for effect, hoping to scare you. Deborah's recurring narration doesn't really hide its conceit, it's just whether or not it truly is intentional that leaves me heavily conflicted. Put it this way, the film makes a point about how desensitized we've become due to the saturation of media, which is reflected onto Jason and his growing detachment from the things actually happening right in front of him. But then you have Deborah admitting to sensationalizing the truth for dramatic effect, which again contradicts the point of showing the truth. As such, if anything, you arguably have this paradox where it highlights the inescapable desire for emotional effect over undisturbed realism. It kind of poses the whole debate surrounding whether something can ever truly be objective if it's in the hands of those inherently subjective. Look, I really want to give the film the benefit of the doubt and say it's secretly genius by making a serious film about direct cinema and showing people the raw, undisturbed truth under the guise of it being an ignorantly and unintentionally manipulated student film. But in that extreme case, the characters need to act more natural than they're presented. In fact, I'd make the argument that all it really needed was a more transparent framing device. Perhaps it could have been a reenactment in intersected with real footage to bridge the gap. It feels like Diary would have suited the mockumentary format better as it worked for The Bay and the Plykipsy tapes, because you could have demonstrated the ubiquitous voyeurism of the lens through different forms of media, effectively being a commentary on new media through the use of transmedia. As it stands, the characters, dialogue, and the action itself are so bad to an unearthly level that it's not even laughable, it's just depressing. For example, there's a scene where they first encounter zombies on the side of the road and the driver Mary runs over them, and what proceeds is this random moment to meditate over guilt before she shoots herself to a very flat, inexpressive reaction from the others. Anyone know she had a gun? Why would she do this? Because of what happened? Those people back there? That's a powerful idea brought down by fucking awful performances. This is what I mean by a low-grade student film. It's as if the actors were told not to act or just simply were pretending that they couldn't act, and what you get are these robotically cold characters. Maybe they're hiding. Yeah, maybe they're hiding because they think we're dead. They then go to a hospital, and the whole fight scene with the zombies feels like something parodied out of Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. There are attempts at oddball humour, like this deaf Amish man showing up with a pipe bomb to kill a group of zombies, but the real humour comes from the unintentional stuff. Like the fact that there are three separate occasions where Jason films someone being attacked right in front of him, and he does nothing to help, becomes hilarious, because the whole film everything shtick makes him out to be a borderline sociopath. Yeah, Deborah does call him out on it, but she never goes hard enough on him. Like, if I was being attacked by a zombie and you, my mate, was just standing there the entire time filming me for TikTok or whatever, the least I would do would be to kick him in the fucking balls. You get all these awkward, uncoordinated encounters that feel too much like a no-budget first-time film, and then it has the gall to stop and try to make something meaningful out of it, like how the group's university tutor goes on about being in the war and how it's not killing that's difficult, it's living with it. The whole thing is a fucking joke! Notice how I haven't really brought up zombies much throughout this video, that's because they don't really factor into it or provide any real horror or suspense. They sparingly pop up to provide nasty gory kills, which out of context is cool in its own way, but again, for a film so heavy on thematics, it contradicts this whole idea of media sensationalism. If you're just looking for a good road trip movie, Zombieland is perfect because it takes a more joyous and adventurous approach to the concept of moving from place to place. In Diary of the Dead, every new location frankly ends up being an uninspired dud with little to offer besides an idea, and the kills don't do anything to make me feel at least satisfied with the carnage. It could be that Romero just works better within isolated settings than doing something that's more vast and 
and diverse. It's somehow more tedious than The Walking Dead, nothing substantial ever happens along the way, it's barely even a little bit entertaining and couldn't be any more anticlimactic if it tried. The only memorable fraction of development comes from a character called Tony, who initially behaves antagonistic and confrontational regarding every matter, only for him to slowly mellow out and soften his attitude when the despair truly settles in. It's small fragments like this that shows that the film does understand its own nihilism, and seeing it end with the characters essentially being trapped in a small confined room, ironically surrounded by cameras, as the zombies overwhelm their friend's house, leaves you with an empty feeling of, oh god, how miserable and depressed was Romero when he wrote this thing. Next week, I'm not hiding the fact that I'm going to be covering Land of the Dead because I think it's a decent companion piece to this film because it handles the subject matter with a lot more fluency, let's say. So until next time, stay safe, stay away from film students, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!